Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Well just last week I received in the mail Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice by Triton Noir. You can't see very much because it's a very black box and it's packed with really nice miniatures. I've also played the game and really enjoy it. You can see my initial thoughts on my first unboxing video. But now I've got to get painting because we're into the campaign and I want to make sure the miniatures are painted as I'm playing the game and it looks its best. So by the end of this first video, I will have painted 47 miniatures. 47? Wow. This is just part one. I'm going to do several videos on painting all the miniatures in Assassin's Creed. Let's not muck about and get started. Firstly, here's my painting area. I've described this in several videos, but let's quickly go through it again. I've got all my paints in racks organized by hue. These are Citadel paints. And uh, over here there are washes and technical paints and such. We've got other paints going through here and then contrast paints over there, which I'm using more and more these days. They're very handy. I've also got a wet palette. This one is by Redgrass Games. It's very good. I highly recommend it. I've got a nice sharp scalpel to use for cleaning up miniatures. I've got a brush. In this case, it's a number two Rosemary & Co. Kalinsky Sable. Uh, they're very good. Uh, I've got a water pot and I've got a paper towel for cleaning up. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to do is paint the four assassin figures, of course. It's very important they're done. And I'm also going to do the four assistant, or assistant, <laughs> apprentice assassins. The apprentice assassins. There's two female and two male. And they come in handy as well when your main assassins die and you have to repeat a mission using an assistant. I said it again. Apprentice assassin. So I'm going to do those in the same batch. This is my first batch. It's good to do figures in batches. Gets them done quite quickly and uh, gives you a good sense of completion. Now the first thing I do with all my figures is just quickly check them for mold lines and flash. Uh, flash is just excess bits of plastic that have come on. There's nothing like that on these, but there are slight mold lines. So get yourself a sharp scalpel, be very careful of your fingers, and you can just carefully scrape off any of those mold lines. Now you can be super, super meticulous with this and go around the whole figure and make sure that every trace of the mold line is gone. Or you can just do as I do and do it relatively quickly and take it off the most obvious parts, which will usually be on the top where it crosses the head. You often see mold lines popping up there. You can also use the edge of the scalpel blade just to give it a bit of a scrape. And that scrapes away that line. Um, but really spend as much time on this as you want to. Because these are gaming figures, I tend to do this pretty quickly uh, because I don't want to waste too much time cleaning up stuff like this. And when you're gaming with them, you really don't notice too much unless they're really obvious. Usually ones around the feet I don't bother with too much because you're not even seeing that much. So there you go, he's done. On to the next. So I'll just go through this batch of figures and clean these up a little bit. When you are doing this, just use a little bit of a rolling motion. So just roll the blade off if you're actually cutting pieces off like that. Or as I said, just scrape. Um, but you will find sometimes they're in very awkward positions, in which case there's really not much you can do. Just do the best job you can. Okay, they're done. Now, uh, you'll probably find that for some of the figures, especially ones where there's like 20 guardsmen or something, you will do these very, very quickly, this cleanup phase. In fact, you might not even bother with it at all. Um, with the assassin figures, of course, you're going to be seeing them all the time, so it's worth spending a little bit more effort. So now they're cleaned up, the next stage is priming them. And for that, you can just stick them on a piece of cardboard or something, but I have this stick that I've made. It's a piece of uh, metal um, on a piece of wood, and I've stuck a foam block onto the bottom of it. And then I just use blobs of blue tack, stick them on here, and stick my figures on. And I'll do those in a row along the stick. And then I'll take this outside and uh, spray it with white primer. Now I use Citadel white, which is the Corax white, um, because I want to start from white. Some people start from black, but I've always started from white and always paint that way. I find it a lot easier, but it's up to you and depending what paint technique you use. When you're spraying, of course, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated space and use a gas mask to protect your lungs. 
I like to get some reference material for painting the miniatures. Here are the beautiful professional jobs done for Triton Noir and I put them on my iPad so I can look at them while I'm painting, even though I won't be getting to this standard. So let's get started with the flesh areas first. And for those I'll be using Kisler Flesh. And for this figure, I've forgotten all the names. This is Claudio, I think. I'll be using Katachan Flesh. Now usually I put these on quite roughly because I've been painting around them. Um, but in this case, as I said, I want to preserve the white that I've already sprayed on so I don't have to put that on again. So I'll put it on a bit more carefully than normal. And of course, make sure to mix some water into your paint so it flows on and it doesn't obscure the detail. Sometimes when you've done your priming, uh, the priming will really make an area where there's a bit of a mould line a bit more obvious. You might think, oh, at this stage you want to get rid of it. You can always take that out and paint over it. Now I'll start painting all the little red details with Blood Angels Red. And I can do this straight from the pot. And I just want to carefully apply this to the red stripes that are on all the figures, using that reference material as a guide. And doing this very carefully because I want to preserve all those white areas. You can see that gives me a lovely rich red and it flows on very easily so it makes doing that detail work a lot easier. So that was Bastiano. This is Alessandra. We've got Daria. You can see they all have different patterns of red on their clothing. Here's one of the Apprentice Assassins. Here's the other one. And finally, Claudio. Now I'm getting Contrast Wildwood, which is a nice dark brown. And I'm going to use that to paint all of the dark brown areas on the figures. Usually things like uh, boots and gloves and belts, stuff like that. Goes on very easily. And it gives me just a little bit of contrast and highlight when painted on the white. Daria's boots will be black. I'll do those a bit later. Here's the Black Templar. And I'll do the black areas. Daria's got a lot of black on her. She's got a black cloak. So I'll paint that carefully. Quite a generous amount on the brush, just so it goes on smoothly. And of course her hair is black as well. And her boots. And you'll notice I'm not painting over onto the base at all, because I'm doing a light coloured base. Runefang Steel is the steel silver colour I'm using for the armour plates. Alessandra has a few armour plates on her body, so I'll just paint those carefully in. Claudio has uh, a necklace and uh, a belt piece and of course his sword. If I mix a bit of Retributor armour into that silver, I get a nice goldy colour. It's not too gold, has a little bit of silver into it. I like to use this colour for doing the hilts of swords. There we go. And here's Bastiano, Daria, and Alessandra. Now I'm going to shade the entire figure, including the armour, using Nuln Oil mixed with a bit of Lamian Medium to thin it out a bit. A couple of brush strokes of Nuln Oil, or brushfuls I should say, and another brushful of Lamian Medium, and that'll go on nice and easily and not be too dark. That's just enough for the armour, though really you could have straight null oil on the armour, but I want that lighter mixture or that weaker mixture going over the white areas. And here I'm wiping some of that excess off where it's pooling on highlight areas just by wiping it off on a paper towel and using a dry brush. Seraphim sepia goes into the face areas, any skin areas, and also on the gold metallics. And for the base I'm using Wraithbone, painting that directly on, and this is why I did the boots carefully before, because as you can see the base colour is light 
and this is the base stone colour for my bases. Make sure you get that little lip right around the edge, just that top bit. Now I'm going to highlight my white, starting with Corax white. And the reason I'm using Corax white, even though it's a little bit grey, is because it has really good coverage and it'll go over those uh, now quite grey areas uh, without anything showing through. I don't have to do multiple coats. And this gives me a good basis for redoing my whites. And I'm leaving a bit of that grey area behind in the shadows, as you can see. So I'm really redoing most of the white, except for leaving that grey behind in the shadows. Of course, in the highlight areas, it's going to be pure white, like on the top of the head. You can see here how I'm leaving some of that grey behind. Of course, the alternate way is to do the whole thing uh, white and paint on the grey shadows later. You can do that. Using Stormhost Silver, I'm highlighting the metal areas just to make that pop a little bit more. Just painting in little highlights, give that a bit of depth. Next up, Gawthor Brown, and this is my highlight for my wildwood areas. So a little bit on the toes, uh, the parts of the boot that need highlighting. And now back to Black Templar, and I'm going to use this with a fine brush. I started with this brush, but I ended up using a much finer brush, just to do a little bit of what's called black lining, and that's just to bring out the shadows a little bit more, where there is areas where the armor might blend visually into the white. If I just put a very, very thin black line between those, it just gives it a nice bit of definition. You can either do this with a brush with a very, very fine tip or a smaller brush like I've swapped to here. And this is really the part where I'm just going over the figure, making little fine adjustments. White Scar is a much lighter white. And I'll use that for a highlight in a moment. But for the moment, I'm just mixing it with a bit of flesh to highlight the flesh areas of the face very simply. And then a couple of dots of black where the eyes are, and a very, very thin little line across the mouth. Starting to look good. A little dot of white on the tip of the nose. And now I'll use White Scar to highlight the white some more. And this is a much whiter white, but it doesn't go on uh, with as much coverage, so it wouldn't have been effective if I used this as my base white. And also it just gives me an extra layer of white. Now I've got two tones of white, which makes it look a bit better. I can save this very bright white for the highlights and uh, the tops of the folds of the cloaks and things like that. This is Mephiston Red and I'm mixing this with a little bit of white just to give myself a, a pinky colour and I'll use this to do some very, very small fine highlights on the red areas, just a tiny bit just to make them lift a little bit in the folds of the sash. Here I am just using a little grey mix to add a bit of definition to the hilt of the sword. And then going in with the black and, and delineating that cowl a little bit more. And there you have it, Alessandra. This is a good example. And you can see it's not as beautiful, of course, as the uh, very carefully done professional shots, but it looks great from a distance and there's a decent amount of detail. Here's our Assassin's Apprentice, looking pretty good as well. You can see the little highlights with Gawthor Brown on the uh, boots and gloves with the other Apprentice. Now I'll continue those techniques with the other figures. We've got Bastiano here and I'm painting in the white highlights. Carefully adding more white. That's the white scar going on. Or is that the Corex white? That's probably the Corex white. 
but just the same techniques. They're all very similar. There's Bastiano. Added a bit of white and brown to the stuff on his back. Those two masks. That's just white. Now I've got Daria, who's a little bit more complicated. And here she is after the wash. And now I want to put on highlights. So I'm using Dawnstone at first to highlight the black. Put a few highlights in. Bit of detail on the face with black. And of course with that light flesh shade. Just the cheekbones, the tip of the nose, the chin. Highlighting the red with that little bit of pink mixture. And then I'm going to carefully paint in with white the patterns on her breastplate. Uh, you can do this as carefully as you want or as finely as you want. I did it a little bit roughly just to give the impression of that decoration. Adding some more white highlights to the cloth. Made a mistake there so I just brushed my, uh, put my brush into water and just wiped it off again. You can often fix mistakes by just doing that. You can see I'm using a smaller brush now just to do these fine details. That's probably a number one brush. A bit of silver on the dagger and then some very tiny white highlights or light grey highlights on the hair just to make it lift. You don't have to highlight every single little fold of hair, just enough to give an impression of it catching the light. While I've got that lighter white I'll use it to do some very fine edge highlights on the cloak. And of course uh, the highlights on the black boots as well. Now with Gorthor Brown I can highlight the brown areas. And there she is, looking pretty good. Lots of detail in that figure, but just get a fine brush and work through it. Here's Claudio. I decided to uh, match his pants to the illustration, so using Dark Reaper I painted over just his knees or his breeches. And then using the Corax White, carefully painted in some white stripes once that was dry. And this gives this figure just a little bit more character. There he is. Now it's time to do all the other figures. So I put all these down and um, attach them with blue tack to this sheet and prime them with white. As you can see, there's a lot to do. There's 30 figures here uh, of crossbowmen in uh, two different styles. Very similar or exactly the same really painting for both of them. They're just slightly different poses. And here's my reference material which I found online. Now I don't want to go into this level of detail but I want to get a little bit close to it. Let's start off with the flesh areas. Followed by Wildwood again for the dark brown boots. Now later on I decided to do the bases first and then do the boots, but you can do them in either order. You just have to be careful not to mix those colours. He's got a kind of kilt which also is in dark brown. His belts. There's a sword hilt and straps. Sorry, not a sword hilt, that's where he holds his quarrels for his crossbow. There's probably a special name for that. I don't know what it is. There's also brown areas uh, on the side of the shirt that he has and uh, the thing that is around his face and chin, whatever that is, it's like a part balaclava. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of dark brown as well. And uh, the, the gloves and the crossbow, do it all in one go. It's all dark brown, close enough. It speeds things up.
Stormhost Silver I'm using for his armor areas. As you can see, I used a different silver before, but I decided to go right up to a silver color rather than steel. I think it was Runefang Steel. You can use either, they're very close colors. Carefully painting all the armor areas. And there's the base coats for the armor and the dark brown areas. Back to Blood Angel's Red, the contrast paint, and we'll do uh, the feather and his hat. And the sleeves. And his tabard. I think it's called a tabard. Just doing the rest of the sleeves there and those beautiful puffed sleeves that he's wearing. And the front of his tabard, keeping that um, heraldry area in the middle still white, just painting around that. And of course his leggings. Just carefully painting around the armor areas. And then painting in the uh, animal that's on his tabard just very carefully. It doesn't have to be exact, just to give an impression of that. Time for the black areas. Black Templar, he's got a full beard and there's a little black line underneath that, um, that heraldry. There we go, base colours. Now I'm going to shade the armor, armor areas with straight null and oil. Straight from the pot. This brings out all the nice detail in those armor areas. You can see here the detail really popping out when you give it a wash. There we go. Sarah from Sepia on his face, on those flesh areas. And we're really getting there now. Lots of detail in there popping out because we're using the contrast paints. It's got a little bit of a highlight already. It's a nice base color. Now we've got these swordsmen. These are our other ones. There are 10 of these. Flesh colors, of course, and there's a lot of Gawthor Brown used on this one. In my color scheme, of course, you can do your color scheme as however you like. As you can see, I've painted the base first with Rathbone. You can do those in any order you like. Then I carefully paint the boots with Gawthor Brown. Now I should point out I didn't paint all these individually, I batch painted them. So I, with all the 30 figures, for example, of the crossbowmen, I painted all the browns first, all the silvers next, and that's a much faster way to get through things. It's a bit boring, but it really speeds up the painting. You don't want to do each one individually or you'll be there forever. Then here's uh, leather get up, his brown leather get up, carefully painting because I want to not have any overlap of colour on the other areas I'm going to paint. Though it's not so important when you're using just normal straight paints like this. The contrast paints need the white undercoat to work well. He's got some braces and there's also a little chin strap going around which I'm also painting that brown. McCraig Blue, McCraig, I don't know how you pronounce that. That's for his leggings. And his sleeves. This makes him contrast really nicely with the crossbow men on the, on the board. And that little feather in his helmet is also blue. He's also got um, a kind of neck piece or whatever that is painted blue. When that's dry, I paint around the um, rope that's around his waist, or his belt, also in blue. Using Stormhost Silver, I'm going to paint all the metal areas. The whole dagger, including the hilt, will just be silver. And of course the uh, metal shoulder pads. And his helmet. I 
There's some buckles on the back too. If you want to be bothered, you can paint those in just to give it a bit of extra detail. And there's the base colors for our swordsman. Looking pretty good. There's also a couple of little silver straps just on the front of his belt too, which are a nice little detail to paint in. And using Null Oil now, I'm going to shade all of those silver areas. Of course, make sure everything is dry in between these steps. The last thing you want to do is wash an area which still has wet paint on it. This brings out this detail nicely. And then Agrax Earth Shade for all the brown areas. That shades those really nicely. Remember, if you have too much applied to the miniature, just dry off your brush and wipe up any pooled areas where the wash is pulled too much. Wash the boots, careful not to affect the base. There we go. Seraphim Sepia for the base. This is how I did all my bases, just Rathbone washed with Seraphim Sepia. And it works quite well, very easy to do. They're already textured as you can see. And then using a dry brush, I'm just wiping off some of the excess so there's not too much pooling. You can see I can just soak it up with a dry brush. And then I use Dryad Bark for the edge of the base. Carefully painted in, painting it in so I just get that lip of stone at the top. Still unaffected by the brown. You can see there how it just that little lip just goes over the edge and leaves the paving stone clear. Now I'm going to highlight the blue on the figure with Techless Blue mixed with a little bit of Corax White for an even higher highlight. So this is just straight Techless Blue. Very simple highlights, I'm not going to muck around too much. Just enough to give it a bit of depth. And this looks good from a distance. And of course the feather in his cap. Mixing a bit of white with that and just on the kneecaps makes it lift a little bit more and on his elbows. And probably on the top of the feather as well. I also just uh, dry that off a little bit and then just wipe it over the cloth belt. Not obscuring the detail too much. And just giving that little bit of a highlight. Normal flesh highlights, very quick and easy. On the hands as well. On the knuckles. Once all my miniatures are painted, I blue tack them to a big sheet and spray them with varnish. Um, I'm using Tamiya Color TS79 Semi Gloss, though you can use a matte varnish if you want to. I just prefer a slight amount of gloss to it. Well, there we have it. 48 miniatures. I thought it was 47 at the start of this video, but actually it was 48. And uh, this kind of breaks the back of Assassin's Creed um, Brotherhood of Venice because you won't be doing this many of the same type again. From now on we've got lots of 10 which is a lot more manageable. Um, and the trick to this is really knowing when to stop because I could go on and put more detail into these miniatures but let's remember they're playing pieces not display pieces. I put a little bit more effort into the Assassin figures because you're going to be using those all the way through the campaign of course. But uh, for these crossbowmen and swordsmen, they're done pretty quickly and I didn't go crazy with highlighting. You could, of course, but you probably drive yourself irredeemably insane. It's very tedious doing 30 miniatures at once, which are all very similar. Uh, and so with this way, you get them done fast and you can use them to play the game. Well, that's probably the toughest part of painting Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice over and done with. Lots more interesting miniatures to paint, however, so I'll see you in the next episodes. Thank you for watching. This is the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. My name is Peter. I'm also known as Universal Head. Check me out on social media, on the website at Order of Gamers, and on my Patreon channel. Bye for now.